This is one of our spirit schools, ministered by Gustave Leroux. Please enjoy it. Know that it will take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Please subscribe and have a great day. Well, there's this place where we are at right now. I know, I know I'm not the only one that's there. It's a deep place in your kingdom, Father, where you are surrounding your people with dimensions of who you are. Not just Yahweh, Yahweh, not just God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not just Jehovah and every part of Jehovah that comes with it. Father, I see so much of who you are. Angles, dimensions, rounds. All that you pour over us and into us, Father, just so much of who you are, an explosion of that consuming fire to pour into us, Father, that you breathe into us, Father, you're so desperately longing for a people that will go into all of what you've opened up for us, Father, and I know that there's a people right now, they can see us hungry, that's running into everything you've opened up, and we want to say yes, Lord, you've been building a framework upon your people. Uh, to carry the magnitude, the multitude that you're pouring into us for right now, for that generation that will run with everything that's available, that's engaged with the seven spirits, that is engaged with the angelic, that understands how to work with the angels and have them work for us in creation to align things and to propel things. Well, we need to understand that we need to know our position in you. And that's what the seven spirits do. But in the same breath, they train and equip us to go into creation and to bring things into place. They show us the dimensions of our scroll so we can begin to do the things that we have agreed to according to what you have desired for us. Father, we've engaged with the living creatures. Father, we've engaged with the 22 letters. We've engaged with the 24 elders. The laws of Zion, the laws of Jerusalem. Father, we're beginning to understand that you have opened up so much for us to engage. And everything we engage in the heavens is set to, to that place where we get to go deeper, higher, wider into you, where you pour into us, where you open up the gates and the doorways for us to go into everything that's available to us, so we can get to know you, we can get to understand you, we can get to love you, we can get to know all that you have made available, Father, and operate out of that fullness in your full image and understand what we are co heirs to, what you have given us, why we are your right hand man, why you have poured into us all of who you are, why we get to come into creation and align things, completely restore the flow of your glory. It's an incredible time to be a Christian father. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, my King. Amen. Whew. Okay, so we are doing a company of, uh, I say a company of people, that's the previous time when I talked about that I called a company of people, but this time I want to call it a design company. And again, I will go back and just remind you guys that it comes out of Isaiah, Isaiah 2, and it shall come to uh, be in the last days, the mountain of the house of Jehovah shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And many people will go and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Jehovah, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach from his ways, and we will walk in his path from out of Zion. The law will go forth, and the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. This excites me. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but every time I read that, there's a leap in my spirit that takes place. Because I know that we are that company, we are that Zion company. We are entering into everything the Father has wished upon and said wished upon. That he has desired for his people to come into, to, to, to um, begin to flow out of, right? And I really, I really urge the, the body of Christ right now to begin to understand what it means to live out of his four faces. You know, I don't want to go too much into detail about that tonight because I really, I touch on it every time I come in to teach wherever I am because it's just such an importance and such a key to your, your propulsion into what the Father has. Because when we begin to understand that out of the four faces is, uh, is what we need to be doing, legislation. Out of the four faces is speaking life as an oracle. Out of the four faces is you being a priest and understanding your priesthood. Out of the four faces you are a king and you understand your king, your kingly uh, um, um, part within, the, within creation. And of course operating from in that realm, legislating that understanding the revelation and the order of Machedelec into creation is what changes things. It's a little bit different than just being in church. It's a little bit different than just going to a church and even just praying like we used to pray. And doing warfare the way we used to do warfare. He's uh, shifting us to a deeper place in Him, right? So what He's doing with the Zion Company is He's building a framework 
for us to, to begin to do the things that this time and season, this generation is supposed to walk in. Right? If you look at the life of Enoch, if you look at the life of um, even Noah, if you look at the life of Moses, if you look at the life of Elijah, look at the life of David, they were built for the frame, they, they, their framework was established through their lifetime to hold what the Father was pouring into them. You know, you, you don't see David afraid of anything. You don't see David um, turning his back like, like we can see. I mean, when there's a lion, he takes it out. And not because he was uh, skilled in what he did, although he was, but he knew his position as the son of Yahweh. We just started here, man. You, you're not man. Literally, I haven't even started yet, actually. I'm still kind of in a move. We understand that he, because he was a son, got to go into the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that he went into the kingdom of heaven and walked face to face with Yahweh. But as you begin to look at his life and, and what he presented as a son, you begin to understand that he must have been on the mountain of gold because he must have engaged with, with Metrodome where he got a key. And that key is the timeline where he gets to go into different dimensions and realms outside of the timeline that he's in. Because he did things and said things that wasn't for the time that he was in. Right? I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, just, just, just eating the showbread in the temple was already crazy. Right? That was, uh, he should have died on the spot, you know, as far as I can understand this. The fact that he killed Goliath um, is, is another crazy understanding. And this is, uh, they say it was up to nine foot tall. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a nine foot person I had. It's scary, right? It just sounds really scary. And he was five foot. It was a 12 year old, right? Uh -huh. But then in the same breath, if you look at the, the understanding of uh, the way it went down, uh, David had a gun and Goliath had a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you don't go to a, a, a gunfight with a knife. Right? They said that these guys were so good with these slings that they could take out a bird flying in the sky. You know, so really, no matter what Goliath was going to do, because of the confidence and because of the fact that David was the son of Yahweh, nothing was going to stop him. You know, he didn't pick up five stones because he thought he was going to miss. And this little man has taken out a bear. He didn't take the bear out with his bare hands. That would have, man, that would have been nice today. You know? <laughs> that would have been really nice. Take out a bear with his bare hands. <laughs> he didn't take out the lion with his bare hands either. He used the sling because he had that much confidence in what he could do. Yeah. Meaning that he practiced every day, all day long. Mm -hmm. He picked up five stones because they say the lion had five brothers. And he was just going to take them out, but he didn't have to. Because once he cut the heads off, or his head off, that was it. The nation fleet gave up, they surrendered. So I believe that God's really building a framework for us to rest on, right? He's building in you and in me, He's building a framework so that He can pour into us everything that we are supposed to walk in for this time that we're in right now. So it's more than we can tell. So we understand Design Company will be obedient to God's directions. Now you have to understand when I say obedient, or even when the word talks about obedience, it's not slave mentality. Because if you look at the, uh, at the generation that, 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 that wrote this, Moses, and everybody that he engaged with, everybody that he was friends with, everybody that he spoke to, spoke to they had a slave mentality. Matter of fact, the first 40 years that he was in Egypt, all he saw was how um, his people were slaves and did everything that the Egyptians told them to do. So when he left for 40 years and came back, they still had that mentality. And matter of fact, they didn't know anything other than just the, that mentality. Because it's 80 years later, so many of them have died. Generations as, as, uh, was rebirthed in that mess. Yeah. So all they knew was obedience. Because if you're disobedient, you, keep, you get killed. If you do anything outside of what was told to you, you die. Now I want you to understand, so the mentality of even writing this book was, well, they're slaves and we are slaves and we just have to do everything God tells us to do. And many mentalities in the world is told that we are slaves servants of God. And it's understandable because it's a beginning phase. You start out as a servant, but you never really start out as a servant. But how do you understand? If you have kids, you understand this. My kids are young and I would say, Torin, um, don't you want to quickly come here? And then he comes and I say, don't you want to pick up that? Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to go pick up that stuff in the kitchen? Dad, I'm not your slave. I go, but that's your chores. That's what you have to do. 
go do it, right? <laughs> so we might feel like servants, right? Because for some reason they don't believe that they make a mess. I don't know if your children are like that. Thank you. Yeah, they just, they just don't believe. I said, Dad, I'm in my room the whole day. I don't, I don't make any mess. Yeah, okay. So sure, pal. He comes into the house, he throws his bag all over the lounge, takes his shoes off in one corner, takes his socks off in the other corner, and then he starts messing in the kitchen. I mean, I know it's a gener- not a generational thing, it's, a, it's an age, when, age appropriate because all my kids do it. I mean, I did. I was pretty talented at it as well. <laughs> so when I say the Joshua generation will be obedient, I don't want you to think of that, that mentality, we are slaves to Yahweh. When he calls us obedient, it's because we are the body. My body is obedient to the head, but it's not, it's not operating as a slave to my mind. To what my, my mind says. It doesn't operate to a slave, as a slave to what my mind projects it to do. You know, my, my hand doesn't go off oh, really seriously. Why do you have, want me to move while you talk? Can I just rest on the talk, please? I'm really not in the mood. There's no rebellion. This is what my mind, my, my, this is the way I talk and my body just accepts. I don't know if I'm trying to make sense yet. Okay, so we, we need to get that mentality of slaves out of our system. Because he's looking for a company of people that will operate as the body. That will understand what it means to not do what we do because he told us to do it. But to do what we do because there is nothing else in us uh, to do. That is the only thing that we can understand and perceive. Anything outside of what we want to do is not God's will. Because our will, uh, uh, what we want to do is his will. Yes, because we are one with him, right? It says in uh, Joshua 1, 7, be, um, Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful in uh, uh, whatever you do. This is the heartbeat of the Father for this generation. I mean, to understand. First of all, uh, for two generations ago, we still believed that if you're a Christian, you have to be poor. And then, and then they, of course, they came out with the prosperity message and everybody thought it was from Satan. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, the poor guys who preach that. Because we're now beginning to understand, well, Jesus was a rabbi. And the rabbis get to rumor. Jesus had thousands and thousands of followers because he was the most popular rabbi that ever lived in Israel at any given time. It, it was incredible. I mean, he could go anywhere and there was a minimum of 5,000 people following him. And then they said that was just a man. If you include the, men, the women and the children, we're looking at about 15,000, 20,000 people. You know, that's a lot of people. And it was on a daily basis. And the rumor is one fortieth of a day's wages. Meaning that everybody that saw Yeshua as their rabbi gave him a fortieth of a day's wages. That's why he had to get someone to look after the money. Because he had excessive amounts of money. That's why I can wear a robe that costs a year a, a year's wages. What's that? Forty-five thousand dollars. Does anybody here have a, a dress or pair of pants, a suit that's uh, worth forty-five thousand dollars? I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't wear it. And even if I could afford it, I wouldn't buy something like that, right? I had a client when I was doing personal training, and she was telling me that if she gets really stressed out or she gets uh, um, depressed, she will go do shopping and she would spend like 250,000 rand, which is uh, probably about 20,000, 20, maybe 25,000 dollars on a pair of jeans, a handbag and sunglasses. Uh, I, I she showed me the bag, I thought, damn, with a massive neon yellow leather bag, I thought I could get that thing and, at the five dollar store, you know, it was just the nasty. But the father's desire for us to begin to understand that when we operate as the body, success is going to follow. Why? Because there's a responsibility, and in the responsibility that I carry as a son, but that which the father has laid upon me has to open up for me. Come on. I mean, understand? I can't do what the father has called me to as a son and not have the resources to run with what's mine. You know, I mean, if the Father is according to what I believe, now I'm still stepping into it. It's not already it's established in what I understand and what I know, but I still have to go into what the Father has shown me regarding governance of the 26 states. And there will be more coming because He told me that it's, it's America, so it's, it's 50 states. 
um, there's nations that I've already been in, um, in the natural, and that's Belgium, Germany, Holland, and uh, yeah, that's, that's three. And um, he's given me those nations to govern. In my own nation, I've been, uh, I've been in South Africa, and I've been in Zimbabwe. Um, I've been in some of the other countries, but these are nations that he has showed me on my scroll that I have authority to govern certain portions of it. And for me to govern these portions and do what needs to be done, because most of it is done in the spirit, but some of it has to be done in the, in the natural. And for me to do these things in the natural, much in my natural day has to change. Yes. There has to be a financial increase. There has to be doors opening. There must be gates shifting into alignment. Things have to fall into place. But I'm going to understand, God's not a takeaway God. You know, he tells you what needs to be done, he tells you what, needs, what you need to do, but then you have to grow into it. You know, when my son was three years old, he could barely talk and he said to us, he wants to be a robotic engineer. But I didn't even know he could say those words. But I didn't understand that because he wanted to be a robotic, a robotic engineer, he wasn't just becoming a robotic engineer. It takes years to develop that. That means he has to go through school, then go to university, and then in the university they will, he will study according to what he wants to do. And eventually, if he's uh, um, prepared, if he's uh, qualified enough, he will get the job. And even then, he, at, at the beginning of his work, he will just start going into it slowly. That's 20 years, 25 years of holding on to something that you have in your heart. Yes. <coughs> so really, the Father just want to remind us that what he has established in you and what he wants to pour into you um, is not just going to happen overnight. But because we are the body, because we are obedient, <coughs> sorry, and we walk in him, those doors and gateways are going to open and things are falling into place. They, they say that another age has opened. And when I go into the spirit and the amount of time I've spent on the mountain of gold, the amount, the amount of things that's come to me over the last six months that was gold, it's crazy. You know, it might not have been 100% gold. It might not be pure gold, but it's gold in, 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 in its form. You know, just the color, if, if, if anything. And I believe that this is the golden age. Yeah. You know, where the Father is saying, listen, I have uh, erected a company of people that understands what it means to govern the fish in the sea. And we're beginning to understand the fish in the sea is not the fish in the sea. The fish in the sea is governing the rich of the nations. Right? And we have to establish ourselves in Him as the body. We know our God and we love Him. And because of that, He wants to, uh, he want, uh, we want to serve Him. Uh, we want to do everything that He is calling us to do. And to do it out of our love and passion um, and our, out, out, out of our desires. This is just natural faith. When you live in Him and move in Him, you want to do what pleases him. You, you want to do the things that he uh, desires for you to do, right? It's just a natural, normal thing. We cannot mess around with what God shows us. Especially now. You know, I can no longer care what the church thinks of what I preach. That's right. And, and I don't like that they are against it. I don't like the fact that they don't um, understand or perceive, but I love them and I will continue to overshadow them until some of them begin to walk in it. Yeah. It might not be everybody, it might not be immediately, but it's my responsibility to constantly love on them, but I'm not going to stop. And I'm not going to repent, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I'm going to continue to go hard up against uh, the fact that they don't want to change. Right? And of course, just coming out of a conference where there was a minimum of 300 people doing this all over the nations of the world gives you a little bit of confidence. Yeah. You know, and that's just a small group of people that comes together. There's groups like this well, in every nation of the world that is understanding who we are and how we need to go into creation and begin to align things. And I say this several times. We are restored. Now let's restore creation. Ooh, that's right? God is not going to restore creation. We cannot continue to wait for Him because He's, 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 waiting, he's waiting for us and we're waiting for Him nothing's going to get done. And then we say, well, you know, God is, we'll be in God's timing, and we'll all be in God's timing. And then we have rain, and we have storms, and we have floods, and people die, and there's hurricanes, and there's, there's what's that, there's fire hurricanes, and you can see that. And they've got uh, the fires all over the nation breaking out, um, and it's an act of God. No, it's not an act of God. 
There's a lack of governance from the sun. The sons, lack of governance from the sons. Because Satan has in his hand what the sons don't want to use. Right? And for as long as we don't want to use what Satan has in his hands, he will continue to use it. And I know this for a fact, and one of the reasons I know this, not just because I've engaged and seen it, but we were at a conference with uh, Justin Abraham, Grant Moni, and his wife Samantha, Aaron, Aaron Smith, uh, of course his family, his team of people, and um, all of a sudden there was a tornado uh, warning, it was massive. So much so that Aaron eventually had to stand up and say, listen guys, according to law, I have to stop this meeting, and I have to give you your options. Because it is intense, it is hectic, I, I am not allowed to just carry on my faith, everything's going to be okay. Um, I have to tell you what's going to happen because they say we have to be in lockdown within half an hour from now and you can no longer be on the road. So you have to choose whether you want to leave right now. We're ordering pizza, for those who want to stay, this building is set. That's kind of the way the conversation went to. Um, while we started, everyone was so exciting, a grant got up and said, guys, this is what I saw. This is a direct attack from the enemy. We explained some things, how the demonic entity has shifted some tectonic plates, and this is what it's creating. And then the whole congregation started walking in the spirit um, in, around the building on the inside and just praying in tongues, just breaking into what was opened up here by this demonic, because they own the mountain, they're sitting on the mountain, they have governance of a certain section of the nation. Because we're not taking back what's ours. Eventually, one of the other leaders comes to um, me. Now, he didn't particularly come to me, but when he got to do what he wanted to do, I was right there. I, must have, I broke through the middle because they wanted to make it an eight, so there's more people that could be in the circle. And um, as soon as we did that, the, the, the storm literally broke into two and started breaking up into smaller portions. Um, I had to go home, so I had to make that decision because I had a spirit school that night. And on the highway, that's where the, 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 the majority of the storm was. And on the highway that I was drove, driving on, there was uh, not one cloud, there was not wind, there was nothing. That's where the storm broke open. Justin even uh, texted me a, a messenger and showed me a photo of how the, the um, storm broke open. And that, that basically just went to be completely another fight. So we begin to understand that once we take back what's ours, Satan no longer has the power to continue to do the things he wants to do. Exciting, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Joshua, uh, the, the, the Zion company will be prosperous and successful. They will be, they will have revelation and understanding of the fullness of what Gimel really represents in the kingdom of heaven. Understanding full supply. Now you have to understand something. 99% of all Christians I know do not live by faith. Which is okay, it's not a problem, it's not a major problem. We live by budget, and um, most of us don't know how to work by, by budget, right? And so we're always uh, in lack. But for myself and my family, we've been living by faith for the last, me and my wife, and I include my family because, well, you know, they don't do anything by faith, but <laughs> they, they do everything by mother and father. But myself and my wife have been living by faith for more than 15 years now. You know, no income, no set salary, nobody depositing money into our account every month, nobody, uh, no debit orders coming into our account, no ministry blessings permanently every month. Uh, just by faith, every month we have been walking by faith and the Father is always, and the reason that He's done it like this is because He wanted to show us where He's taking us to. You know, it's not about struggling financially. It's not about... In the beginning, it was really tough. It was really, really tough. Because I said a mentality that I have to have money. If I don't have money, I'll go sell something. And I just need money. And eventually, I got to a place where it didn't matter. And eventually, when I began to change, and I began to change my attitude about money, he began to pour into us a greater form of abundance. And the closer we got to where we are today, the more he's pouring into us. If I look at my budget 10 years ago to looking at my budget now and what I have to trust him for today, it's a massive difference. Yes. Right? If I look at my spiritual father when I met him, he had absolutely nothing. Uh, not that he came from nothing, he lost everything. Um, and, and, and then he had to rebuild that mountain and it's 10 years down the line and he is in a position where I'm in awe. I mean, he just bought his son a Porsche. That, that, that says that they're doing financially well, right? Yes. Because there's a position, and the position opens up for you. Now, he's already been in that position and was taken from him. So for him to get back to that position is a little bit easier than what it is for someone that's never been in that position. 
right? Because I have to establish the governance that I'm growing into. And we have to understand that. You are, you are growing governance and you're establishing your position and so you're, that which is coming to you, you have to grow into. That yes. makes sense. Yes. See, if we are able to, to meditate and obtain that revelation from God, and if we are successful to do the things that God reveals to us, it will give us success. This is a generation of people, this company of Zion, are willing to press in and receive. Uh, we will learn to overcome and we will learn to prosper. See, we have to begin to understand that Yeshua did not do stuff just because it was a good idea. You know, He was set in a position to be established to do certain things. Yes. And because He was set in that position according to what was on His scroll, everything opened up according to what it was supposed to be. If my gates are open, body, soul, and spirit, then everything that has to come into me will come into me. Right? And of course, we have to understand another thing. Uh, I'm in righteousness, in right standing. What I desire is over here. Where I'm at is over here. Mm -hmm. God can only meet you where you're at. That's right. You have to understand that. So you can't be over there where you want to be, but God's over here where you are. <laughs> it doesn't work the same with revelation, but with reality, if I'm trusting God for a million dollars, but I've never trusted him for ten dollars. I'm never going to get the million dollars. Right. So I can I can then think God's mean God. God said that He will get me that house. He said that He will get me this. He said that this is going to happen, and it didn't happen. He's a liar. But I've never trusted him for ten dollars. You know, I've worked on a budget all my life. I've had a same job that I earned from, and I've never understood what it means to live by faith. But now I'm trusting God for uh, a new house. I'm trusting God for. Um, Whatever, and it's not happening, and God's the bad guy. But I have to grow into the position that is pouring into me, if that makes sense. Yes. So if I'm here, and I want to be there, He's not going to pour into me over here. He's going to pour into me over here, where I'm at. Yes. That's why if I haven't received healing from my ingrown toenail, I'm probably going to die of the cancer. Now that sounds terrible, but you have to get to the place in your life where when whatever comes your way, you've been prepared for it. That's right. Now we believe, according to the scripture, those who live in Zion will not fail or fall into anything that the world has to offer. No sickness, no disease can come against those who live in Zion. That's exciting, right? Go to my Facebook page. There's a scripture that I put on there just the other day. I found it on uh, Instagram where someone posted it, and I took it because I liked it. So on my Facebook it says, just go read it. And we begin to understand, well, if we live in Zion, then this world cannot affect us. Right. <laughs> and we need <clears throat> to succeed uh, to the highest level in the spirit as well as in the natural realm. Mm -hmm. If we are receiving wisdom and revelation to the highest level, then as a result of that we will be prosperous and successful. It says my people die because of a lack of knowledge. So if I turn it around, my people live because of knowledge. Now that life will be Zoe life, which is a God type of life. That enters in and overthrows my perception and understanding of what it means to be successful. It's not just financially. I don't even understand. God doesn't care too much about finances. He says to his disciples, okay, now go to the fish. Go to the ocean and catch the fish, and in the valley of the fish, there'll be enough taxes for all of us. That's enough taxes for 12 people. And it wasn't, it wasn't taxes like what you earn, it was temple taxes. I mean, he did not worry about stuff like that. He needed to feed the multitudes, and uh, all he had was like, five loaves or three fishes, or three fishes, five fishes or three loaves. I don't know. I don't know. But he multiplied it and so much for effect. 20,000 people. So if we understand, and he was not God. Right? He was just Yeshua. But he, he is God, but he gave up his deity to show us what we can do as sons. You know, I've heard so many testimonies where, um, especially in South Africa, where there's a lot of uh, feeding the homeless and feeding the poor, where the food would just multiply because there's not enough. But everybody that comes in gets food. And they can come back for seconds, but they wasn't enough to begin with. 
That's incredible, right? Yeah. He's beginning to understand that my Father is not limited. And when we walk in His fullness, we begin to have that fullness run out of us and over us. Mm. Right? That's exciting. This is what it says in Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. <coughs> For then you will make you will make yourself your, your, your so you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Now we're going to say that one in the Bible. <laughs> You're like, well, it must have been. Well, no, Joshua did not have a Bible. Right. The only, only laws Joshua had was what Moses was given out of the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's not the Ten Commandments. But it's the laws of Jerusalem and the laws of Zion. It's 12 laws. I will still teach on it here. I've taught on all 24 laws. And, then, and if you want to go look at it, it's on the YouTube channel. Um, but we'll get to that eventually. And when you start understanding, we saw it's laws like laws of sin and death, and laws of faith, laws of uh, time and space, laws of firstborn, um, just basic things like that. There is a law like uh, what, you know, uh, gravity. It's not a law that you have to do this and you have to do that. That's not the laws it's talking about. It's a way of life out of the kingdom of heaven that we project into creation. It's understanding who you are and living that life into everything you see and everything that's around you. That's good. Ooh. The Joshua generation will know that they walk with God. Now this is this is interesting because eight years ago I was a son, I was a Christian, I loved Yahweh, I prayed in tongues more than anyone I know. I mean that was just my thing. You know, people even thought they said, excuse me, what you say? I'm like, no, no nothing. Yeah. I remember stopping at the, the, the traffic lights. And in South Africa, if you stop at the traffic light, people come run to you. I want to study all kinds of things. I'll be in thought and I would start speaking to them in tongues. I spoke to my wife in tongues. Right? It was just something I did. I mean, we've raised the dead four times, I included the cat. We've uh, seen phenomenal miracles. So there, there's been there's so much that we've done, there's so much that, we, that we've experienced in, in that realm. We prayed and saw miracles. We, we prayed and saw situations fall into place. We, we tithed and saw Father bless us. But, but I never knew without a shadow of a doubt that it was real. And you say, but how's that even possible? You've seen all these miracles, all these things happened. But I've never seen him. And I've seen visions of him. But I never see it. So I, I still had to have faith to believe that he's real. I had to have faith to believe that he loves me. I had to have faith to believe that I can trust him. I had to have faith to believe that, that, that he is real and he's there and he wants the best for me. But the Zion company will know that they walk with him because they have seen him, touched him. They have been with him. They've engaged with him. They have created with him. They've been sent into creation with him. That he has walked with them in the kingdom of heaven, in Eden. They have eaten of the fruit with him. They have sat at the table with him. They have looked at him face to face, eyeball to eyeball. Come on. That's a deeper place than where the church is at right now. Right. And of course, that's the Father's desire. We have been taught, and of course, Satan, and I hate even talking about him, but he, is, he knows because of the fact that he was a covering chariot. He knows the weakness of man. And he knows the mysteries, and he knows the secrets. So he knows how to twist it. He knows what not to focus on and he knows what to focus on. So he gets us to believe a very simple lie just because we have a Greek mindset, not a Hebrew mindset. He gets us to believe that you cannot see God face to face. Come on. Now how we ever read over the fact that now uh, uh, Moses saw him face to face for 80 days. Uh, not just that, he came down and the tent that him and his uh, elders could go into and engage with Yahweh face to face. Then Yeshua will go as far as to say, well, I don't do anything as I see my father do it. Yes. Now, that doesn't, it's not rocket science. Right? It's, it's logic. You can see God and live. Um, if you look at the encounters, if you look at John, the things that John encountered, even Paul, uh, it is incredible. I mean, Yeshua, in his complete and utter glorified state, meaning Yah -Heh, Heh appears to Paul in a ball of light. He goes blind, but he lives. Yeah. That's the fullness of Yahweh. It appears to him, he lives. He's born again, his entire life changes, but he lives. He even gets healed of his blindness. So we get to understand his desire for us 
is to see him, to walk with him and touch him and to get him to that level where we, where we are literally that intimate with him. We need to walk with God in a daily lifestyle. Not the way we used to, like Adam and Eve did. Like walk with him in the cool of the day. So what I'm saying is there should not be a day in your, in your week, not a week in your month, not a month in your year, not a year in your life, that you are not in the kingdom of heaven. Now, every engagement, every time I pray, every time I overshadow someone, everything I do in my day comes out of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Now it's getting better and better and better as I go along because I still have a bit of stuff happening going on. Right? Uh, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> but it's hard for us to begin to understand this. When we are walking on the path that God has prepared for us, when we are walking in our destiny, uh, then we know God is with us. And we need to know that uh, what is our destiny, what is written on our scroll, this is key. Because if I'm going to be walking in the kingdom of heaven on a daily basis, I'm going to know what I need to establish, what I need to do in creation. I'm not going to just play around. I'm not just going to do what everybody else wants me to do. I'm going to know exactly what I need to do so that the same that has been said about me can fall into place. That's right. That makes sense, right? Now, I have to remind you, we've done scrolls already, but I have a, I have a, a, a natural habit of destiny, and that's what I'm doing tonight. I have several of these schools, and I hope to get some more over the next couple of months, because that's what is in my heart, that's what I'm desiring. Um, I've got a couple of days available. Um, not too many, but I have a couple of days available, so I need things to open. But this is what I was called to. I saw this on my scroll. But then there's other things that I need to do from out of the kingdom of heaven as well, to legislate what I'm doing in the kingdom of heaven into creation. That's governing different states, different nations, different cities, doing different things, going in, interceding for those nations, trading for those nations on the sea of God, and, and bringing things into vision, operating out of the courts, and understanding what the Father has given me as a son to do. Now, I'm a baby in all of this, so I'm just slowly growing into it. Like I said, there's not a book you can go read. Like Ian Clayton has been doing this for 38 years. But we've been, I've been doing it for 8 years. Um, I think Justin has been doing it for 16 years. Um, Aaron Smith has been doing it for 10 years. You know, there's it, just not that much going on, but yet we are growing into it. So it's a position that you're established in, and you have to grow into it. Right. right? So you want to know what you have written on your scroll so you can have everything done according to what is supposed to be. Otherwise, you're going to be doing things, and it's just works of iniquity. Works of iniquity is your own, doing your own thing. And it's nice to do your own thing, but doing your own thing, you can raise dead. You can cast out demons, do all kinds of things, and it sounds great, but that's not what's written on my scroll. Now, I'm not saying that on my scroll it's not written to cast out demons and raise dead and do all those things, but on my scroll it's written specific things because we have to step into what the Father has called you to according to what you agreed to. But if you read your scroll, you said, yes, that's what I'll do, you'll send it to your mother's womb. Then, of course, with corruption in your birth, you forgot everything. Then you get born from above and you get back to the knowledge of who you are. That's why when it says uh, a generation that will walk with God. Right? It's in that dimension. Uh, the, 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 the Zion company will be equipped to prepare provisions uh, to live by faith. Now listen, pass through the midst of the group and command the people saying, People are prepared provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will um, you are to cross the, this Jordan and to go to, the, the, to, to go to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving to you to possess. That's what the Father is kind of desiring, a company of people that understand what it means to live by faith. Now, that's not always easy because for me and my wife, uh, we, had, we, we started off uh, moving from Johannesburg to Cape Town, we just got married. So we got married on the 8th, the 11th, we were on a, uh, a, a train to um, Cape Town. And even the car was on the train. Right? Because they said if, you, if, the train, if the car goes on the train, then you can also go on the train for free. And it was nice, it was first class. It wasn't great, but it was nice. It was like a 26, 27 hour drive on the train. We got there. We were, her, her aunt was moving to America for six months, so we were going to live in her aunt's house for six months. We already established a salary from a missionary that we we're going to be part of. 
um, of the missions that we're going to be part of called Generation X. Um, when we got there, we went to her aunt's house, they were still there for about a week. But in that week, we learned that there's no funds. We had, I think, a thousand rands worth of uh, grocery vouchers. We just got married. That's about uh, $80, maybe $60 of uh, grocery vouchers. No income, and we didn't know what to do. And the father started teaching us how to live our faith right there. We had to do whatever we could do. Now, uh, our leader started because we started selling some things for the ministry, and we got the profits for it. And so we, we sort of surely started again. Then I started working at the gym as a personal trainer. And of course, that went very well. But you still have to have faith. There's no salary in only your own company, right? right? You have to trust God that clients are going to come in. You have to trust God that things are going to open up for you. You have to, even, even in your budget, because most of the time we get to understand my budget is just not enough. No matter how I put it into different places, it's just not enough for me to really live in abundance, pay everything I need to pay, and do everything that I need to do. So there's still a measure of faith in everything that we do. And the Father wants to get a company of people in that place and begin to understand, well, if He tells me to give $100 and I only have 90, He will supply the other 10. That's right. You know, Justin Abraham has the most incredible testimony when the Lord said to him, I need you to give 100 pounds. Uh, it's a little bit more than dollars, right? And he only had 90 on him. So he took the 90 out and he said, Lord, I only have 90 and 10 pounds appeared in the other hand. <laughs> you know, we're beginning to understand that if we, if we perceive what the Father is pouring into us from out of the kingdom of heaven, there's no lack in the kingdom of heaven. You know, God doesn't announce every now and then, God's listen, we need to cut a little bit here and cut a little bit there. Um, you know, the budget's not allowing certain things as much. You know, there's abundance all the time. It's life. If you've been in the kingdom of heaven, you understand what I'm saying. We need to legislate that into where we are tonight or today. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been with you. Can you see on the, on the table? Anyway, we need to begin to understand that the Father is literally desiring a people that will understand what it means to live out of provision, out of the provision of what God opens up. We are to be able to teach people to live under the provision of God. Each one of us is responsible to uh, possess our own inheritance. Now this is something that you need to engage in your bloodline. You know, if I look at my family, I look at my, my mom and my dad, and I have to look at my wife's family as well, because we are now interlinked, right? Yeah. Uh, I have to look at her generation, and her bloodline, and what they're into, and where they come from, there's nations involved, because uh, uh, her dad comes from England, her mother is in Johannesburg, the other, the other, her other father, no, her other father, um, her other father stays in New Zealand, and uh, the grandmother, and that family, and all of that's connected to there, and my parents, um, from Europe and all these different countries, there's nations involved. Yeah. And there's, there's always something that's hidden because Satan knows how to hide stuff from us, mm -hmm. things that we won't go into. So we need to align those bloodlines to have the provision that belongs to us come into fruition, right? Yes. But we have to believe it. The Zion Company will be equipped, will, will equip the people to be consecrated or sanctified. Uh, and set apart, dedicated, and holy. Yeah. And I always understand, you cannot do that unless you're holy. Mm -hmm. Set apart, dedicated. Now, holiness has got nothing to do with sin. I've said this several times. It's, it's putting a glove on your hand, and the glove is holding onto your hand, if that makes any sense. I don't know if I can even say that. My wife says that doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to me. I don't know how I have to put it. Um, I put a glove on my hand, and my hand is holy onto the, to the glove. I mean, my fingers go into the glove. You can, it looks like we are one. I mean, if you put one of those latex gloves on, you can even see your fingerprints through the gloves. Right. right. So my hand fits in there perfectly. And that's holiness. So if I go into the kingdom of heaven and the angels around the throne goes holy, 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 they're not saying God has no sin. You know, there's no record of sin in the kingdom of heaven. They're saying, wow, he's incredible. And they talk about his all. And he wants us to begin to understand that, yes, holiness represents purity and sinlessness. But we step into him and he covers us completely. Once He covers you completely, you start living out of Him. And when you live out of Him, you cannot sin. Uh, it's, not, it's not, I'm trying to sin, I'm trying not to sin. You cannot sin. It's not something you can even, it's not part of your DNA. Now you might say, well, I, I don't understand that. Because, well, it's because we don't live in Him. 
And this is something we've been taught from the beginning that we started as, uh, as Christians, but we have never actually physically stepped into it. Yes. But it's only now recently. For me, eight years, but only really, uh, I would say, in the last five years that I physically stepped into Him and felt Him overshadow Him with His glory and His fullness. That's good. And this is where many of us are in the process. It doesn't just happen. When Israel were at Gilgal, they dealt with the things from the past, embrace fresh revelations, fresh re the, uh, embrace fresh revelation of the truth they had lost sight of. And was set apart for the processes, of the purposes of God for their generation. That's what we need to understand. You have to deal with the things and embrace what the Father has called you to. There's a lot of things we need to deal with. You know, I have dealt with some things in my life for the first time in 40 years. And it's not major things. I don't have to talk about it. It's not, it's not sinless in any way, fashion, or form. But it was changing my mind. Changing the way I think regarding certain things. And of course, we begin to understand that it takes 21 days for you to change the way you think. Yeah. So what I've been doing for the last almost 21 days now is just constantly saying, every time I want to engage in something that I know is not exactly where I should be going or it's not exactly what I should be doing in the measure that's available to me, I would say I'm changing the way I'm thinking. I'm changing the way I'm thinking. And I've seen extreme change in my life. Extreme, like phenomenal. I don't even know who I am. And it's been, been three weeks. Uh, everything just opens up. I've got more energy. I've got more um, focus. I just uh, engage in a whole different way because things have opened up, right? Take responsibility to preach and then let the Father bring judgment to you. Nice. And judgment is life. It's to propel you to a higher, deeper, wider place. Yes. Okay, so we need to understand the Father is building a framework for a generation that will run with what's never been available. Uh, I say it's never been available, it always has been available, but we never believe that it's available. Now there's a company of people that's beginning to believe the things that the Father wants to pour into us. So we will be obedient in a measure because we are the body. We will understand what it means to be prosperous and successful. We will understand what it means to walk with God. We will understand what it means to live by faith. And we will understand what it means to be set apart. Come on. But in a measure greater than what we know right now. That's exciting, right? Yes. Let's stand. <laughs> to stand to, to access this, to step into it. So Father has become before your throne and I want you, when I say this, I want you to enter in before his throne. I want you to stand before him. And let, him let him look at you in the eyes. Look back at him. Let him begin to overshadow you with his glory and his fullness. But look at the majesty. Look at this the majestic, beautiful, awesome, glorious, phenomenal God. Look at him and let him begin to breathe into you. Let him begin to frame your being for what he wants to pour into you. Let him begin to reveal to you your destiny scroll. Let him open up to you what you need to step into so you can jump in your mountains. Show him who you are and what you give over to him so he can pour all of who he is into you. See, if there's anything in you that doesn't belong to him, he doesn't get to pour all of him in. And we have to give him lordship over every dimension, every realm, every part of who we are. So that he can overshadow everything. And the company, the Zion company, will do exactly that. And so Father, we stand before you as a people right now. And we say, pour into us and establish into who we are, what we need for right now. To bring governance into the nations of the world. To establish alignment. To bring, bring, bring things into full fruition in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.